What's up, guys? Sub Zarek here, back for another VOD review. Before I get into the VOD, I want to shout out that today is the end of signups for Project Mentor. They close tonight at midnight. Uh, probably Kai probably made it like Eastern time because that's his time zone. If you don't know what Project Mentor is, listen to, to Kai yap about it a little bit here real quick. I put him on 2x speed because I, I know he's a yapper. He likes to talk. If you don't already, Project Mentor, these signups close in two days at the time of recording this video. And if you don't know what it is, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find out a lot more in more depth. But TLDR, you get to get paired with a top challenger tier player for the entirety of the competitive split in Teamfight Tactics. And I'm talking, this is Cream of the Crop. We're talking about people who have consistently hit rank one in their respective servers. One player who's actually hit rank one global before. We have players who have been to worlds and we have players who are consistently being, like, making regionals. These are some really top tier players. And if you guys like it for this program because there is an interview process, you will be able to work with these mentors one on one twice a week with one hour plus coaching sessions. And not only that, you have a direct channel that is accessible to you and your mentor that is available to you 24 7. You also have Nitset and set tournaments that are exclusive to mentees only. And this is a really big draw, by the way, that I think is a really different program. You get to learn how to prep for a tournament. So if you're ever playing in the trials and you're aiming to try to go to the cups and maybe even try to go further than that, this is a really great program to learn how to do that because you are working with players who have experience with that. I don't know any other program in the TFT space that actually offers that. So again, for bang for buck, this is insane value in my opinion. And finally, you also get optional pro bot review sessions once a week that are led by yours truly. So these are optional because twice a week is already a lot of coaching, but then you also have these optional bot review sessions you want to just hop in and we just basically talk about like pro gameplay, you know, talk about decision. All right, that's that's enough of that. Um but yeah, if you guys uh, if you guys want to sign up the and let me turn my lo-fi on now. If you guys want to sign up, uh, signups close tonight for uh, for Proyecto Mentor. So, man, I don't want my head to be that tiny. Fuck it, I'm I'm just having my head be this big, and it's gonna cover up some of the UI. But you can still still see all the items. Uh, but yeah, signups close tonight for uh, for Project Mentor. Um, it's uh, it is a it, it's a really really cool program. I uh, I don't know. Kai Kai is someone who loves to to have these like really really interesting ideas that just this is not something that exists in the TFT community. This like really really dedicated set long coaching program with two tournaments included in it and weekly VOD reviews that Kai's doing. Like we we didn't even have the VOD last set. It was just you know you and your your mentor. But now he like added the VOD reviews at all to add even more like. Uh, basically like content that you get for signing up. So it, it should be a blast. It should be really fun. Can't wait to meet my mentee. Um, but if you know, if you're somewhere out, someone out there who wants to do this, uh, then yeah, I'll have the link in the description down below. All right, today we're about reviewing Dish Soap because he played a comp that I really yap about. Uh, and it starts off with this tower defense augment. This is a pretty cool augment. It's basically uh, like one of those wandering trainer dummies, uh, but it only comes with one emblem. But the upside is it can actually like auto attack, basically. It shoots out these tiny little autos, which is, it's pretty hilarious, honestly, to watch it just shoot these. It, it reminds me of like, uh, like balloons or something like that, where you just have a little tower that's going pew, 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 pew as the game goes on. Um, but that's not 100% what I want to focus upon this game. Um, he ends up getting the the Black Rose emblem here and look, you can see it go pew, it's just a tiny little bullet out. Um, but what I really want to talk about is the the comp that the Dish Soaps end up, ends up playing this game. Uh, and you can already start to see kind of the direction towards getting there. Uh, he starts off with this Gangplank, and it might even be for moment one, the second that he gets this Gangplank, the Dish Soap says, you know what, I want to actually play for a Gangplank reroll setup. This is one of the strongest real comps that we've seen on PBE so far. It's just absolutely dominated anybody who gets uh, an early Gangplank. And the other unit that you really care about in this comp is Swain. If you get an early Gangplank or an early Swain, and you see a lot of people wanting to angle towards this. So I'm interested to see how Dishsoap plays it. I haven't actually played it myself yet, so this is going to be a learning game for me and a learning game for you guys uh, about this. But you can see the second we get this shop, yeah, I think it's it's done. The, the second we see this shop, I think we are locked in to this reroll comp. Um, and of course, the nice thing about uh, the, the GP and the Swain is that they're both form swappers. So this is kind of like a, a form swapper reroll comp. Um, usually you're going frontline Swain, backline GP. As far as I know, that's the only way to do it, but I don't know, maybe. Because theoretically, you could go backline Swain, frontline GP if you wanted to do that, but I, I haven't seen many people do that. It's usually just the backline GP, frontline Swain, but you, you never know with uh, with traits like these. If you guys aren't familiar with form swappers um, and you know, you're like, what is he talking about? Frontline, backline. The way these champions work is similar to how like Jace worked in, I believe that was set six. Uh, we've had a, a decent number of champions that work this way, where if you put them on the front line, they're a frontliner with, you know, a frontline ability. And if you put them on the back line, they're more of like a backline damage dealer. A really great example of this is Elise. If you guys haven't played with Elise yet, on the front line, she jumps and like stuns everybody. But then if you put her on the back line, she's actually like a damage dealer, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, it's uh, it's very interesting. And my God, this is a good spot to play. This is the ideal spot 
play GP reroll. Uh, so I can't wait to see how Dish Soap does it. Picks up the IE first uh, onto to GP, clearly prioritizing uh, some kind of ability for his spell to crit. Makes sense. Uh, I would say the look at those, just those autos look meaty. But yeah, he does have this big like barrel explosion um, that I feel like, yeah, you probably want that spell to be able to crit. And he's also scrapping the, the glove, which, you know, if you guys ever played, that was set six as well, right? Scrap, scrap is back. Oh, this is... I feel like one of the most fun traits to play around uh, in TFT's history, scrap, where you just, any component that you have on one of your scrap units, well, you know, if you have only two scrap and then it's one component on a scrap unit, transforms into a full item. So this cloak, you know, it could be a Renan's, it could be a QSS, like last fight, it could be an adaptive helm, it could be a lot of good stuff. We just hopefully uh, don't want it to turn into something like a D-Claw. Though if you do get to more vertical scrap, uh, I think it's six scrap that says your items become lucky, which the first time I read that, I was like, what, what does that even mean? But it's like, it's like lucky gloves. It, it means that your items are gonna be tailored towards the unit, which is really, really nice. But yeah, I mean, this is the easiest five streak of Dish Soap's life there. There's, he could play almost any board with these units on it obviously he's playing his strongest board here fitting in the vladimir who fits in nicely as a sorcerer onto this board and a black rose because we have the spat uh which is not you know normally something that you would do um but you know we have the spat so might as well get the three black rose in which is a nice little extra uh tankiness trait uh which is you know very cool another vlad here pick up also a rel which i don't know if we're gonna hold on to um because yeah i mean I'm I'm interested to see what the board ends up being. I don't know a hundred percent. I know obviously that you're you're playing around Gangplank and the Swain, um, but you know this is a VOD review for me and for you guys, which you know in many ways is a lot of the VODs that I do. Sometimes it's just a purely teaching VOD, but a lot of the time it's me, you know, learning in real time. I wonder what we're gonna see here, because I could I could see a Quicksilver being made here. Um, looks like he's gonna want to go for the Gargoyle here, and he's just gonna continue to keep this uh, item here. So no Quicksilver for uh, for Dish Soap doesn't really care about that. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean we're we're just gonna continue to to sit onto this uh, this board right now and and wait on our slams here. I mean you don't really need to slam anything out of this glove because you're getting the potential of, of really good stuff. All right, cloning facility is a, a fun augment though. I don't know how good it is on a unit like Swain. You you really, I imagine you really want this onto a unit with um with like a good, really, really impactful spell that doesn't really require items. Um, Somebody that would come to mind is Elise. The problem is she's gonna have so much mana that I don't know if a, like a second Elise two could cast. Um, Slammin's solid, but we really do want to reroll and I, I don't tend to love Slammin in reroll, but it could just accelerate us to level seven. Clockwork Accelerator has just been a weak augment for a long time, so I don't know. I, I guess I could see it potentially being taken. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what Dish Soap takes here because I'm don't. i not in love with any of these. Um, rolls past these two, gets item collector and too much value. Uh, this item is like, or this augment is like, theoretically, it can be a better trade sector if you have four two costs on your board. And then if you have any less than four, if you have two two costs on your board, then it's just exactly the same as trade sector, which is kind of a weak augment. Um, so you have to get to four two costs for this to be a better trade sector. If you do get to four two costs, uh, double the effectiveness of, of trade sector is quite a good augment. Um, but obviously, it's difficult to get to four two costs on your board. I don't like it's just solid. Maybe we just end up taking that as just solid combat. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe he's really looking at this clockwork accelerator. Nope. Okay, he's not in the end. Yeah, it's just gonna be the item the uh, item collector. It makes sense. Just a decent augment in general. Not not amazing, but not terrible. Uh we also ended up getting uh the uh the, the ergot into this board um just to, to activate some more traits, which you know makes a lot of sense, I would say. Getting in uh pit fighter for uh GP is pretty important. Just I mean, I guess the omnivamp at the end of the day is not that important on a backline GP, but the extra damage is nice. Um and okay, so dish gonna to start team building out the board so that's his core that he wants to play around which is kind of a funny core uh yeah i want him to put some more stuff in like obviously jace comes in later but like i, I want to know what he wants to roll for on seven because it's not so obvious obviously like this is really nice for black rose um i guess i mean trundle is scrap and bruiser so he like he he puts the traits together pretty well. It's just, you really want to trundle on your board late. I think Dish Soap's trying to figure out the board in real time as well. Like once again, Draven's a cool unit to fill out traits, but do you really care that much about getting Conquer in here? Ugh, I mean, this board is kind of disgusting to me. We'll, we'll see what Dish Soap ends up playing. Cause I can't imagine that we're just playing a random Draven and a random Trundle on our board that late, but we'll see. Obviously you can get to five costs later and cut some of these units, but you do want to keep Pit Fighter in. I, I imagine Conquer is really not that important. I guess it's like, I mean, it's not even really an econ trait. Um, okay, item wise here, I wonder what we go for. I mean, you could go for some kind of double IE setup. There is just another GP here, which yeah, is probably just gonna be the grab here. We can make a dish up scouting right now to see if Bramble Vest is a reasonable slam. You're gonna 
oftentimes have to make Bramble Vest here though. Like, I don't know if you actually have that much of a choice because there's a lot of AP in this lobby, but like if you don't make Bramble Vest here, the question is what are you doing with Chain Chain? Because yeah, that's, uh, there's very little AD in this lobby, but like, can you afford to not make it? Uh, Dishop's gonna say yes. He's gonna sit on this and say, you know what? Maybe I can find something better. Maybe I can get like a, a Crown Guard Vow or something like that and just not slam Bramble. But great scouting by Dishop to make sure that he is, he's not slamming just kind of a suboptimal item here, but it, it does feel quite bad because I mean, what what else is is this going to be? Also, we got the JGIE set up onto the GP, the classic. And it, raise your hand, raise your hand in the YouTube comments if you remember JGIE. I'm actually, dude, I should do like a poll. I should do a poll. Um, I can't do, you can't do like polls in YouTube comments, right? I'd have to do it in like a post. But like, I, I want to see like how many people in the comments are like pre-JGIE TFT players versus post-JGIE. Because like, there's probably a good amount like of post JGIE players. I don't know when they made that change where you, you know, the the IE also gave the ability for your spells to crit so you never really want to build JG plus IE um anymore, but I don't know. I I'm I'm curious actually. All right. We get the full 10 streak here. Look at this GP man. And that's just GP2. I can't wait to see the GP3. Um but we'll see here. Gonna get the Draven in here is just a an okay unit, I guess. Another Swain, another GP is great. Yeah, five GPs, three Swains this early is fantastic. Um, and we do also have the Cassiopeia in uh, on this board right now. I wonder how long that's going to get played. I mean, right now it's just for Black Rose. Um, but I mean, four Black Rose is, is definitely not bad. It's just like a random, maybe that is going to be what he ends up playing. Ooh, double Swains here. No charms to roll for because we uh, we live in this world. Okay, last Whisper going to get made. He did end up getting the possibility of not having to make uh, this. So yeah, he is going to make a... He ends up actually just making Bramble though. That's kind of funny. Um, but he ends up just going the Bramble D-Claw setup. At least he gets some uh, MR. And the idea is that Rod can actually turn into a damage item. If he were to make something like Crown Guard, um, you know, it's it's a solid item, but then you get left with uh, with not uh, kind of an offensive component on GP. You'd have to go for like Edge of Night GP or something. The Rod, I don't know if we're gonna go Gwinsu. It doesn't look like it would be that bad on him. Um, all right. I mean, none of these, uh, none of these augments look good. Tomb Raider, in my opinion, is complete ass. Um, I guess there could be a spot where you could take this, but I, I tried, I took the prismatic version of this and this, it was like the worst thing of all time. It was no augment for the rest of the stage. And then like at the beginning of stage five, I got one item and then died. Uh, maybe the gold's a little bit better cause you're not down that much stats, but still I don't absolutely love it, but I don't really love either of these. Um, I mean, I guess you could take the Omni vamp, but once again, you don't really need the Omni vamp on a GP. So yeah, I'm not loving any of these really, but I don't know. I guess if you had to, you could take health as well, but I don't know, we'll see. He's looking at Tomb Raider. I mean, if there were a spot to take Tomb Raider, this would be it, we're so far ahead. Um, I still don't think we're going to take it, though. I imagine we'll just take, like, Overheal or something like that. Um, yeah. Oh, wow! He did! He went for the Tomb Raider. All right. I mean, I'm down. I'm down to see it in action. But, I mean... Once, once again, if there is ever a spot to take this augment, this would be it when you're this far ahead. Theoretically, a gold augment giving you three full items is very, very good. Um, you know, you compare this to something like an item grab bag uh, that gives you three components, like... It's, you know, you're getting basically double the value of item grab bag minus the, the gold aspect of it. Um, so you get a lot of value out of it. The problem is that uh, we are playing down an augment until that happens. And that's what I really, really hate about it. But uh, we'll see. All right. So this ends up being the board for um, for Mr. Dish Soap for a little while. We have, it's kind of interesting that this is his... Uh, his pit fighter that he has on the board, this this stupid Draven, just so that he can fit Conqueror on this board. I mean, I guess, I guess Conqueror is nice uh, stats wise onto to someone like Swain. Okay, actually, man, maybe Conqueror is not so bad. It fills up the traits so nicely. It's just, I mean, Swain, eh, he'll he'll get a decent amount of. It's it's on takedown, right? Or or is it on kill? Uh, the the Conqueror. We're we're learning. This TFT is a learning process. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the uh, the traits uh, and actually see because um because I don't actually know if it's on kill or on uh, on takedown, because uh, that actually makes a pretty big difference. Okay, surely I can hover this, right? Um, takedowns, right? Okay, so all Swain has to do is get an assist on one of these. All right, we actually get our first item already here, which is crazy, four or five. I mean, this is probably part of the reason why Dish Soap angled actually so, he, he was so interested in picking this up, uh, ends up getting a Shoujin here, which I don't know what we're gonna do with the Shoujin unless we like remove her off uh, one of these GP items. He is kind of like an AP or an AD caster, uh, and he has a pretty big mana cost. So maybe he's just gonna remove her the rod and then Shojin the GP and IE uh Last Wizard Shojin, perhaps. Um, but yeah, okay. I mean, I guess I could see it. We already got a full item. 
And then Pepe left too. Isn't that milk? I'm pretty sure milk's gonna die soon. Ooh. I, I took Headhunter on a on a Tristana game the other day and it, it felt pretty good. Yeah, when you're in a spot like this, when you're pretty confident, yeah, and he is just gonna end up going the Shoujin here. Um, get more attack speed to just have your, your GP pop off. Uh it actually like makes a good amount of sense, in my opinion. Uh it's really good in my opinion on Trist, just because she already has that that scaling AD, and if you add scaling attack speed onto that, you just get an insanely scaling unit. Also, ooh, this is a this is a cool little uh play by Dish Soap. I I traditionally you know, I, I love Elise's ability. I think it's so, so nice as a frontliner. But in this spot, we've got all these AP items here. So why not bring Elise to the back lane? Boom, we have a backliner. Oh, form uh, forward swappers are so, so cool, man. Because now, yeah, with this tier, this rod, these could end up being Elise items. And she can actually help us do some damage with those spiders. That, that ability is so cool. Sending out the little, uh, the spiders. Ooh. We do get stomped a little bit here, but he's just praying for the downfall of milk there. That's another death. Don't need even Trout. I guess, yeah, Guard Breaker could be a solid uh, offensive item. I mean, it feels like it kind of has to be. Um, just up rolling a bit here, maybe to get some bench space, but we don't really need it. We, we've got enough here. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're just going to continue to roll in seven until we hit both of our three stars, and then we're going to start pushing levels. Maybe, I mean, ideally we find a Jace, but obviously Jace on uh, seven or eight is, is not that easy. I'm um, going to make the Morello here to get heal cut, and then the Adaptive Helm. I love it. We are one off both here with the Duplicator, so boom, we hit. And yep, that is, that's actually a beautiful hit from... Uh, from Mr. Soap here. Like we are, we've hit here 5150 gold. Like this is a fantastic spot to be playing three cost rule in. And let's watch the GP go, man. Just pew, 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 pew. He's getting all of these, man. This is such a cool unit. And then Swain tanking it up so long in the front line, actually, just doing absolute work. 13.5k damage from uh from the GP. Also, man, there's our next item. This is could be our final item that we're gonna get here. I don't know. He's looking at GS. It's kind of interesting. I guess with the idea that we're going to get in, I mean, right now we can put Cassiopeian as a damage dealer. Are we going to play like a damage dealer Jace? I guess so. I was thinking of another tank item, but maybe he thinks, especially with the four Black Rose in, that his frontline stay. I mean, maybe we're just going to play this Cassiopeia forever. Um, I, I don't, I guess, hate it. I mean, four, you can you can see just how big this, uh, this Scion is. Like, uh, it actually, I mean, she's... She's doing a, a lot of work here, actually. Um, just, just as an extra unit that adds a fourth Black Rose in. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of really good stuff about Vertical Black Rose. I still haven't got a chance to take a Black Rose plus one, so it would have been cool if this game was Black Rose plus one, but I'm also down to just watch a GP reroll game, watch it do absolute uh, destruction here. Um, and also, wait, let's go back and uh, hover over that because Disho was looking at this, and I think it's actually uh, kind of cool to look at how this... Uh, this works so uh so it gets these upgrades so it the the first upgrade is 50 percent attack speed and then once it gets to the second upgrade it fires a second arrow each attack 50 percent damage but also the kill tracker wait that's that's actually so cool this is something that somebody suggested on reddit i think it's an absolutely genius idea is that if they're removing augment stats um then they should just add more like trackers uh to all your augments so you can just get a sense for like what they're doing i mean you can look at like damage del look this dummy dealt 900 damage um uh, but the kill tracker is kind of it's it's a fun one. I mean, trackers are also just fun to get a sense for, like, I mean, it's not getting a sense for anything, really. It's getting a sense for fun, but okay. We got the Cassiopeia still on this board. It'll be interesting to see if we do. I mean, I really love, like, Redemption here, but we'll see if he goes for Shoujin. Yeah, I like Redemption a lot. If we can just get some Redemption procs onto our Swain, I feel like this is just going to be huge for his ability to, to survive. Uh, it'd be awesome if we could put a Redemption onto that Scion. But yeah, I mean, 2700 HP Scion is, is kind of insane. So yeah, we're just going to throw this onto the Garen. Also nice to give some HP to the Garen. He's then giving more HP to the Swain, which is really, really nice. This Garen unit is so cool, especially if you get it into like four Emissary and he's just doing absolute work. But I mean, even just a two Emissary little Garen splash. Emissary is such a cool trade as well ah they they cooked with this set man i cannot wait for this set to go live and also just i mean look i'm gonna queue up uh more pve tonight and we're gonna we're gonna play some more viewer games so you know if you're interested yeah check it out but uh but yeah all right top four almost secured here for dish soap he's really coasting at this point four streak just trying to get to level nine with as much gold as possible uh because dish soap's goal this game when you have such a good early game, uh, like he did 10 streak natural a GP2, your goal in this spot should be to play for first. Uh, and the way to play for first is to have as much gold as possible going nine. We don't want to like do any kind of like really, really early level nine. Unless it, I mean, at this point though, you could think about a five uh, or a six one just because of the fact that it, um, it, it 
could potentially be a really big upgrade, but uh, yeah, this is actually a really, really interesting choice from Dish Soak. Do you want to 6-1 it or 6-2 it? Because uh, 6-1 gives you the potential to keep your streak. 6-2 means you're getting basically another 10 gold, uh, very likely, to uh, to roll with, which is uh, a lot. And then you also gain some more gold just from kind of like efficiency-wise. I don't really need Morello here. He's going to go Death Cap. Oh, the idea being that, yeah, we can move items over to Cassiopeia. This Guard Breaker is going to go on to... Um, the Cassiopeia and then the Death Cap is going onto the uh, the Elise here. Yeah, I like this. And these items could still flex onto backline Jace if that's what we want to do. I imagine that's the idea because carrying Cassiopeia too doesn't seem that interesting, but we'll see here. The the GP is still doing insane work. Great play by Dish Soap to not level here. He still wins this fight. Like this is this is max cap TFT. Now he can level with an insane amount of gold. All he needs to do is pick up that uh, that Jace. LeBlanc's really good as well for five black rows. Uh, I wonder if he would even play the Jace now if he could get it, or maybe he's just gonna sit on the five black rows forever. I mean, it makes sense. Also gets the rumble in later. Um, we That means we do end up losing Bruiser, I think. Um, but uh, but I mean, it's it's perfectly fine uh, on this board. We're still playing Elise, right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's fine. He's a much better unit. So it's a very good call from Dish Soap. And I mean, he's just dominating with this board. The five Black Rose. I, 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 hey, at least we can see the five Black Rose Scion here. It's a very, I mean, look at that Scion on his HP. Look how big his HP bar is. I don't know if he hovered it. Oh, we're going to tech down to four Black Rows, which is a little bit sad. Oh, 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 this is really, really nice. Move the LW over to the uh, the Jace. We know that he's basically, I mean, if we put him right next to the GP, he's always going to be proccing for the GP. And then we can just go full, full damage on the GP, the GS onto him. I mean, beautiful. Just perfect itemization from Dish Soap, as usual. This guy lets nothing through. And he gets the cutscene at the end with the Caitlyn. So good. I mean, th this game was a blast. You can see a blast, a blast of, of barrels from Gangplank. But you can see why this comp does so well. The second we hit even GP2, we were just win streaking forever uh and then you know, once we hit gp3 it was not even close so hope you guys enjoyed this fight review if you did please like comment subscribe once again link to project mentor signups down below they close tonight at i mean you can probably look through the the, the handbook i'm sure that uh that kai has is going to have like an exact date but it's it's supposed to be midnight tonight um i just don't know which time zone it is but yeah go sign up if you're interested and uh and perhaps we'll i'll uh, i'll see you there if not i'll see you for the next fight review